In this video, I'm going to show you how to make pretty decent terrain out of, well, mostly cardboard. Awesome. Let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth YouTube video. I'm Harry and this is another terrain tutorial. Basically because I really enjoyed making the last one. Uh, I enjoyed making the rivers even though they didn't come out amazingly. I think they gave us a good lesson in the fact that actually you can make pretty decent terrain out of fairly easy to find materials. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video because as I mentioned cardboard is the material of choice. I don't know why, but for some reason, people just don't seem to use it to make terrain. I know that there are downsides, it warps, it's, you know, it, it's not very absorbent and it sort of bends and it's not very resilient. Fair enough, I get it. But it's also got a couple of brilliant selling points. Firstly, it's cheap and plentiful. And secondly, it's cheap and plentiful. No, no, actually, it's, it's very versatile as well. You can use it in lots of different ways, and that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So uh, grab some cardboard, some hot glue, or a hot glue gun, which they're you know, super cheap, and some insulation foam. You can get this at Wix's or, or wherever in the world you are. It's just normal kind of insulation foam. It's fairly easy to come across, or you can just use polystyrene, which is relatively easy to get your hands on. And if you don't use that, well, maybe you could use something else, but you'll work out how I'm going to combine all these things to make a delightful looking bridge uh, throughout this video. So let's get stuck into the process. So we start by simply measuring the river we need to get over, which makes sense for a bridge. Uh, I've, mine's about six inches as the river it made in the other video. Uh, and I just kind of drew it out. I measured out the line and I did a rough arch shape. I did try using things like compasses and stuff and I just found I'm, I'm not doing it very well. So uh, if you have a set of compasses and those little spiky things, then do use that. But uh, I just kind of drew it in the end and made sure I was got it right and then just measure out the points and how thick you want the uh, the river to be and how tall you want it to be as you can see I've measured with a hunter orc and just um, put a line below his shoulders so that at least we know that he can look over over the parapet when he's standing on the top of the bridge and then I just measure it out and uh, as you can see pretty very pretty straightforward process um, not not all that complicated. So I cut out this uh, this diagram in paper uh, to make a little template and then I do the same with the cardboard, the cardboard! Uh, very exciting. And here we go, from that one I make a second. Magic. So now using those two bits of cardboard, um, I'm basically going to glue them together with a sort of arched bridge. Now all I need to do to do that is get the width of the bridge I want. Uh, the scenario I'm playing requires four models side by side, so again, using models, I just did that and then I'd use a cardboard again I mean you can see all the glue stains and things like that on it but what's great about corrugated cardboard is you can bend it really easily because it's got so many bend points so it comes out as a nice arch I measured it out and cut the edge off and then I just hot glued it around the uh, around the bridge and as you can see it's already making a bridge shape and it's holding very firm uh, already so it's it's actually pretty sturdy sturdy looking stuff so you can see it, it pans straight over the bridge and I've just put two bits of cardboard there just to show you uh, what I'm going to do eventually to make sure the incline isn't too much. This is crucial actually. Make sure you haven't got a too steep an incline because otherwise your models will be sliding all over it when you're playing. Um, I just use some more cardboard to cover up the edges of the bridge so that it doesn't uh, have little gaps at the end. Um, just, just basically by drawing around a bit of cardboard and then uh, there you go. So that's the rough shape. It's all hot glued in place. So all we've used so far is cardboard and a bit of hot glue. Now there you can see uh, the lovely squeaky sound of uh, the polystyrene being cut. Now this is just normal insulation foam you can buy in huge sheets from uh, local DIY shops like Wix's, this is where I got it from, and I'm cutting it into bricks. Um, they're about three centimetres long, about sort of a centimetre tall and about half a centimetre thick, um, and I'm just slicing them up. And this may seem like a laborious process, and it is, but it's actually quite satisfying and fun um, just making these tiny little bricks and I'm making dozens and dozens of them and then basically we're just building brickwork out of those slowly but surely 
you assemble the brickwork, just, you know, uh, getting a bit of hodgepodge kind of glue and just sticking it all in place and making a little rough kind of shaped wall. And it's great if the um, the bricks are all of varying thickness and, and battered a bit. I put them in a little plastic Tupperware box and put a couple of bits of stone in there and just shake it around a bit. And then you get this kind of rough and roughened up kind of stone. But you just slowly start assembling your your wall and eventually give it plenty of time Oh, and uh, make various different things. This is for me to make the bridge. Uh, so what I'm doing there is making the little little uh, arc, arch stone, keystone, keystone for the top of the bridge. There you go, and you slice it, loads of little thin lines. And there, amazingly, already, you've got what is clearly something that looks much cooler than it did before uh, it did with just the cardboard. So uh, then I'm just moving on to the next stage straight away with wood filler. Uh, this is just all purpose filler and I mix it with a bit of PVA glue and water and then just layer it up, cover all the little seams of cardboard that we can see here, uh, but mainly just cover up a bit of the bridge so we've got a bit of texture there. Very nice, very nice. It's very straightforward, hardens it up and it'll take paint really, really nicely in the next stage. Now, talking of paint, what I do, I mix up a bit of a concoction here. I use a bit of black um, wood paint that I've got, um, PVA glue, poster paint, and a sprinkle. And as you can see, a sprinkle of sand. And what I do, this, this all mixes together um, to make a very decent thick paint that gives a bit of texture as well. So it's my own home brand texture paint. You could probably buy texture paint, but I just give it a good lather on all over and it gives it nice and even coverage, nice dark uh, coverage as well. Um, and it looks pretty solid pretty nice um, I'm pretty happy with that uh, I didn't bother filming this because it's just a complete mess and I didn't want to get my camera covered in black paint but as you can see filling all the gaps in as well um, you might need to water it down a bit to get it into the crevices and leave it to dry for a good couple of hours before you get cracking on the next layer so this is again this is a paint a tester paint powder grey from Wix's mix that with a little bit of um, my acrylic paint and then I'm just over brushing this now this is where you basically just paint it kind of draw a little bit of the, the surface paint off and then just dry brush it over but um, there's a lot more paint on it than uh, in a standard dry brushing so it's just leaving the black showing through and the lower crevices because you really don't want this to look too dark I mean I suppose you maybe you do but uh, and then you're just just doing it all over the whole thing you can see there that the the textured paint with the sand has been really picked out um, by this by this over bushing layer so just keep going back over it until you're completely completely happy with how much gray there is as you can see, it's, it's some of the bricks that I've got completely cracked are showing a lot more darkness through, and that's fine. That's that's exactly what this is all about. It's all about adding a bit of texture. Now, I use a bit of brown poster paint that I mixed up just by mixing a load of red, green, black, and blue or something together, and I'm just using that for the surface of the, the road there, the, the path. Uh, you can use pretty much any paint. You could even spray paint it at this stage, but um, it's it's not no biggie. I'm just, just give it a layer of dark brown. Then uh, I go back with a bit more of the light grey mixed into the, the grey mixture and just dry brushing over that again, and this, I'm actually just mixing up the uh, brown. I'm using Dark Flesh from Games Workshop mixed in with that dark brown. Um, just highlighting up with a bit of PVA glue in the mix just again another layer of sealing and I'm just doing an over brushing there and you can see it sort of picking out some of the cardboardy textures it doesn't look amazingly like road but it looks good enough uh, this is a cafe paint it's from acrylic I can't, I can't actually remember the company but uh, it's just a kind of coffee-ish looking dry brush of something like graveyard earth now the next stage is a little bit um a little bit more complicated. This is just to add more texture, more colour to the to the brickwork. So essentially, I'm just going over with a variety of different washes: greens, browns, uh, blacks, uh, sort of yellowy colours, and I'm just picking out random bricks. The greens are closer to the uh, the bridge, uh, the sort of water a bit more, uh, and the blacks and the browns are just scattered basically throughout the the brickwork. And the idea of this is just to just to give a bit of variation throughout the whole thing. And then I'm going to use the grey paint. Um, and just dry brush over everything and just tie it all together and this is just pure grey and you can see again the texture of that sand all that tiny little bit of sand sprinkled into the paint um, has really really helped add a bit of texture it's really picking up this uh, this layer of grey <laughs> 
Damien and Steve from the Battle Streams in Middle Earth uh, giving us some musical accompaniment by terrain building there. Now next it's the final stage pretty much. Um, I'm adding dark green flock here. This is foam flock rather than the wood sawdusty stuff because it absorbs the glue better and this is from Geek Gaming Scenics and I'm basically just painting it in largely around the edge of the river the sort of bridgey bit there but it's actually proving lots of different ways. It's, it's um, filling in some of the gaps, some of the bigger gaps that are a bit more unsightly and also it's providing this great splash of colour to make it look like it's a well-worn bridge adding some mid-green there as well and at first I thought this was looking too much but actually I think that this is about right you need to just put put a lot more on than you think and uh, this tip comes from a, a video that I've seen before I, I'll put a link in below um, because it, it, it really was taken stolen from that but as you can see already it looks really nice and mossy um, this is just the sort of mid layer as I, I let it dry a bit more um, and I quite like this and also you can see there the, the browns are showing through particularly well. The greens not so much because I've covered them up with flock, but definitely the browns and the blacks, just adding that variation in the colour of the bricks. And now the final stage is just adding some, um, some little bits of light, very light green, and not very much of this colour, just tiny little bits. I definitely need to sieve this flock in the future because it just comes out in massive lumps. Um, and then finally, after this flock, uh, I'm just going to get a few army painter tufts. What I'm doing, I'm going to cut them in half, so you can see there, it's just in half and then you can slide them onto the edge of any more protruding bricks this is the great idea with polystyrene bricks is you can have loads of different shapes and sizes and you get some that protrude out a little bit more and you can use those for things like this and also dotting a few on the edges of the road I also uh, I use a variety of tufts, so I've got, I think this is wasteland tufts, uh, dry grass tufts, and also some little yellow flowers which I poke into the cracks uh, that I can find any little cracks, especially on the top of the bridge there as well. And I just think it adds this little pop of extra colour and makes it look, well, lived in. It looks, well, almost finished. So there you have it, a relatively straightforward build to make a bridge and you know I'll show you the hero shots in a second but actually this is I think it's a pretty decent effort all you need is some flock some sand some filler some cardboard and some polystyrene and actually it comes up with a pretty decent effect and I'm absolutely no master builder of terrain check out my river tutorial and that'll prove it although i mean i think they came out okay in the end but um i really hope you enjoyed the process and uh, me walking you through this step by step and and um, if you have any tips please put them down in the comments below and um, because I'm not an expert. I'd love to read your uh, expert advice if you have any. And also, I'm sure anyone watching this would love to uh, have tips and pointers so that things don't go wrong. The main thing I would say don't do is, if you can see these flagstones, uh, they're a bit too wide. I think um, they're probably going to break. They're polystyrene. They're a bit flimsy, a bit thin on the sides, uh, if you look at it. So I reckon maybe make them less, have less of an overhang over the edge. But other than that... It, I, I honestly can't think of a way that I could make this better, maybe smaller, but this fits the scenario that I want it to be played for. It's meant to be the Brandywine Bridge uh, for the scouring of the Shire. So it's amazing. I'm really happy with it, um, and I'm really happy with uh, how the process was. I, I, there were times when I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but the hot glue and the cardboard, it just made it so much easier. I've seen people design bridges using proxon hot cutters with huge bits of foam and I don't have any of these things so I thought right I'm going to do this and this is a great way uh, to do it especially because cardboard is so versatile and also so plentiful everywhere so uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the video and um, if you did hit that subscribe button like it put a comment down below with any tips or advice for anyone building bridges and also uh, ask for tutorials if you want something a terrain tutorial in particular uh, drop it down below i'm i'm always interested in building terrain uh, so i'm, I'm going to give it a go i'm going to give some more stuff a go and also if you really really love the content and you want to uh, gain dice battle games in middle earth dice uh, a t-shirt or, or pri be into, entered into prize draws head over to patreon.com slash battle games in middle earth where you can get get support me on the channel but also get access to all those little things right thank you very much for watching Blurum.